Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, uh, we'll be taking a look at what is currently going on out in the tropics as well as what is expected. So there is a recently marked disturbance noted in the Caribbean and there is a tropical wave expected to emerge off Africa maybe by the end of this week that could possibly develop into a tropical cyclone. And so before I go into details, Okay, and so we are starting off with a general look at the Atlantic Basin right now. And so we have showers and thunderstorms noted across some areas. So right in the Caribbean within this area is where our disturbance is located. So uh, it is associated with a tropical wave. And so it is possible that we could see development of this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the National Hurricane Center's five-day outlook. Okay, and so we're seeing that this is marked in yellow, and yellow means that the formation chance is low. So as of right now, it is designated a 20% chance to possibly develop into a tropical cyclone. And so imminent development is not expected because the formation chance is at 0% during the next 48 hours. However, once it is going to be making its way into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, we could see this try to become something out there. But regardless, it is going to be bringing increased precipitation to portions of Central America, so maybe Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, Guatemala, El Salvador, Belize, and Mexico. So if you're in any of those regions, you can definitely expect some increased rainfall as a result of this disturbance here. And so once it makes its way into the Gulf, uh, development will be dependent on the favorability of the environment there. Because even if we have favorable conditions as well, if it is moving too quickly, it will not have enough time to really settle down and get itself together to become something. It will just move right inland with all of the moisture associated with it and not becoming anything of great significance. But if it seems as though this thing here is going to really get itself together, uh, the formation chance is going to be increasing. But as of right now, it stands at 20%. And so let us go ahead and take a look at what is going on out there now. So first up, looking at the dry air map, and we are seeing that there is quite a bit of Saharan dust out there. And so uh, we have that mass of dry air that is moving into portions of the Eastern Caribbean. So the Lesser Antilles is likely being blanketed by all this dry air, uh, resulting in decreased precipitation as well as hazy skies. So if you're in portions of the Lesser Antilles, you can let me know in the comments what the weather is like in your area, if you're really seeing the effects of all of this Saharan dust or not. And so uh, all this dry air extends into portions of the main development region, and this is a huge inhibitant factor when it comes on to tropical cyclone development because we need Need conditions to be nice, warm, and moist. So that moisture would really be a little scarce in the presence of all this dry air, and that is really uh, the reason we have not been seeing a whole lot. So even though the wind shear might be favorable, ocean temperatures are warm, the dry air is just dominant, and so that alone is enough to prevent tropical waves from developing and intensifying. However, with a decrease in all this dry air in the presence of other favorable conditions, then we could definitely see development of tropical waves or disturbances that might be making their way from Africa and so that is what our main models are expecting to happen as we are going to be heading into this weekend and next week. So let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS run here. This is by Saturday on the 20th of August and we're seeing that we have all of that activity taking place off Africa. So in order to understand this map we're looking for those black lines which are called isobars and isobars represent areas of equal pressure and once we see them being close in a circular manner with the pressure below 1013 millibars, then we could be looking at a tropical cyclone. And these colors, these greens, these yellows, reds, they indicate uh, the precipitation. And so let us go ahead and see what is going to be happening as we progress. So heading to Thursday of next week on the 25th of the month, GFS is expecting that that wave would develop into something. And so we're seeing a minimum pressure of 1007 millibars by that time. And that is likely a tropical 
storm there. And interestingly, over in the Western Caribbean, the Northwestern Caribbean, there we have another low pressure that GFS is expecting to develop. So going to Sunday, the 28th, uh, GFS is showing that the wave that is going to be out there is going to be weakening. Maybe it would be encountering some dry air or some strong upper level winds. Just off Africa, there is yet another wave. But in the Gulf of Mexico, there we have what seems to be a tropical storm making landfall along the Gulf Coast. Pretty interesting here. And then going all the way to the first of the new month, September, we're seeing that GFS is expecting uh, that that last wave that would have emerged off Africa would be developing. So the model is being a little bit bullish with these systems here. So I would be taking all this with a grain of salt because we're talking about the long term. And oftentimes we might see GFS showing something major happening, but then they change their mind. For example, this morning uh, when I took a look at the model run, they were showing a major hurricane being out in the Atlantic and now they're not showing it. So we really have to wait and see what's going to be happening uh, because things tend to change quite a lot. But in terms of favorability right now, uh, especially the ocean temperatures, we see that things are very warm. Going from portions of the main development region to the Caribbean, the Gulf, and even well off the East Coast, we're seeing temperatures of at least 28 Celsius and tropical cyclones need temperatures of at least 26, 26 and a half degrees Celsius. So uh, ocean temperatures are well on their way. But again, we have those other factors that greatly contribute to the development of tropical cyclones. So we really have to wait and see what's going to be happening. We also have the icon model, which is picking up on that. So going to the end of that model run on the 24th next Wednesday, uh, it is showing a 10, 12 millibar low pressure system out there. So let's wait and see what is going to be happening, guys, because things tend to change a lot. We don't even have to have development taking place. But I wouldn't be surprised because we're literally reaching that time of year where we're to expect quite a bit of activity. Sometimes there are even two, three, four simultaneously active tropical cyclones because uh, we're reaching the peak of the hurricane season, which is when we have the more the most uh, favorable conditions being out there to enable tropical waves that are going to be merging off Africa to the uh, to develop into tropical cyclones, guys. So we really have to wait and see. But in terms of the ensemble tracks, looking at the Euro ensemble tracks, we're seeing that we have quite a bit of members uh, showing that tropical wave, but only if you are expecting development of it, which is marked by the darker blue. Uh, the darker blue indicates winds of at least 40 knots, which is tropical storm force winds. And then behind that, we have another group of all those members, maybe showing another tropical wave that is going to be following behind. And is this going to be a threat to the Caribbean or anywhere as a matter of fact, it is going to be dependent on the strength of the high pressure. So a stronger high pressure would result in a more westward track uh, of the system and if it is going to be developing then that could put areas in the Caribbean at risk. However, a weaker high pressure system could result in other areas such as the Bahamas and the east coast of the US being at risk or we could even have the system just moving out to sea. So we definitely have to wait and see what's going to be happening and in terms of the GFS ensemble members here seeing something a little bit similar to euro but some of these members are showing a slightly stronger system so we definitely just have to wait and see what is going to be happening guys but of course i'll be keeping you updated on what is out there and so that is really it for this update video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best innocent as i can and of course remember to always be weatherwise